All right. Good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Josh Lawson with the Kentucky State Police Public Affairs Branch. I'm joined by Commissioner Rick Sanders, uh, Kentucky State Police Post 5, Captain David Trimble, and our Public Affairs Officer Stephen Dykes, also at Post 5 in Campbellsburg. Uh, we're here to provide an update on the officer-involved shooting uh, that occurred on February 11, 2019, in Oldham County on Interstate 71. This investigation covers two states, and we worked with Ohio State Highway Patrol to provide you the most accurate current information we can release about this investigation. The suspect in this case is Mr. Tyrell Pounds of Mansfield, Ohio, and the victim has been identified as Ms. Skyler Williams, also of Mansfield, Ohio. At approximately 3.24 p.m. on the 11th of this month, Kentucky State Police Post 5 Dispatch was contacted by Gallatin County Dispatch reference to a 911 call from a witness stating they had observed a distressed female at the Valero gas station at a 62 mile marker in Gallatin County, stating that she had possibly been forced into a vehicle. The caller stated it appeared the female was asking for help and the vehicle then sped away traveling toward Interstate 71 southbound. Troopers from Post 5 were dispatched to attempt to locate the vehicle. Troopers observed the vehicle traveling southbound in Henry County that closely matched the description provided to the dispatch. Traffic stop was initiated near the 34 mile marker southbound on I-71 by a responding trooper when the vehicle failed to yield, continuing southbound without stopping. Pursuit continued into neighboring Oldham County with the operator of the vehicle continuing to evade and failing to stop. Responding troopers attempted to use stop sticks or spike strips at approximately the 22 mile marker southbound the stop sticks were unsuccessful due to the suspect evading their deployment. Pursuit continued southbound on I-71 with the suspect continuing to evade the responding units. And once the pursuit entered Oldham County, KSP troopers were joined by the Oldham County Police Department and the Oldham County Sheriff's Office. Units from these agencies as well as other responding troopers positioned themselves at exit 14, which is the Pee Wee Valley Crestwood exit. The suspect exited the interstate at Pee Wee Valley ramp where he then crossed Highway 329 and attempted to re-enter the interstate. Due to public safety concerns, the primary KSP unit performed a legal intervention stop to prevent the suspect from re-entering the highway. After the vehicle came to rest on the ramp, the trooper attempted to apprehend the suspect, and while attempting to apprehend the suspect, the trooper perceived an immediate deadly threat to himself as well as Miss Williams, the passenger in the vehicle. The trooper drew a service weapon and fired, at which time Mr. Pounds was struck by rounds resulting in his death at the scene. Upon further examination, Ms. Williams was found to have received a single gunshot wound and was transported to University of Louisville Hospital where she was pronounced deceased by the Jefferson County Coroner. The investigation is being led by Kentucky State Police Critical Incident Response Team, or CERT, and we were assisted on the scene by Oldham County Police Department, Oldham County Sheriff's Office, Oldham County EMS, and the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office. In an effort to provide a more complete story leading up to the Oldham County incident, in which I just described. Uh, we'll provide these details uh, from my counterpart, Lieutenant Robert Sellers with the Ohio, Ohio State Highway Patrol. On February 11, 2019, the Ohio State Highway Patrol was notified of an abduction at gunpoint of an Ohio State University student at the Mansfield campus. The suspect and victim were identified and it was confirmed that these two individuals had a past relationship, including having a child together. The child was located and found safe and staying with family members. I will now turn it over to Commissioner Sanders, who will further address the incident and provide additional commentary. Thank you, Josh, and thanks for being with us here today. What I'm going to try to do is, is give you some additional information that has not been released. But I want to first start by saying that anytime we have two deaths in, in a situation, it's a sad day for everybody involved. But we were placed in a situation where we had to take action, and the troopers responded as they were trained to do. First of all, I want to talk about releasing information, transparency, and I'll, I'll assure you we try to be as transparent as we can possibly be. We try to release information to you as quickly as we can. However, we've got to be concerned with how accurate that information might be. An example of that is, is shortly after this shooting, we had reason to believe that this, these two people were from Ohio and that they may be involved in an abduction up in Ohio. But 
There was not identity on the two immediately. The female, we did not have ID on her at all. So it took a while for us to positively identify, positively identify both he and she. When we did that yesterday, we immediately set out a press release confirming that the two deceased were in fact those from the attempt to locate in Ohio. First thing I wanna to release to you is the, the primary unit and trooper that was involved in this shooting is Trooper Joey Brown. And the first thing I wanna say about Joey is he's an exemplary trooper. Actually, uh, Steve Dykes to my right, when we were talking about Joey earlier today, he said, you know, Commissioner, Joey's the kind of guy that's a model for other law enforcement personnel. He has no disciplinary action in his file. The only thing I can tell you is that he is an exemplary trooper. He's a five-year veteran of this agency, was assigned to Post 5 Campbellsburg in 2015. He's been placed on administrative leave until we have some time to complete the investigation where we will then meet with the Commonwealth's attorney, turn the case over to her, and uh, deal, deal with uh, getting him back to work. I want to tell you that, first of all, this, this incident, we, we knew nothing about the, the occurrence in Ohio when this pursuit began. The first thing we received was that information from the Valero gas station up in Galveston County that he and she had been in that gas station and she mouthed the words, help me. The people that witnessed that then called the police, notified us that she may be in distress. One person also said they believed he may in fact have a firearm. So they described the vehicle to us. They said the vehicle got on I-71 and we then put out an attempt to locate on that vehicle. As Josh has explained, we got behind the vehicle on 71. Uh, there was a pursuit. Uh, the uh, person driving that van uh, refused to pull over. And when they finally exited the Crestwood exit, that was the time that we thought we had to take some sort of action to keep them from getting back on the interstate at a high rate of speed and possibly endangering the lives of those innocent people on I-71. So as that vehicle exited the exit ramp, before he could get back on the on-ramp, or when he did get on the on-ramp, we had the on-ramp blocked so that he could not get back onto I-71. What Josh described earlier about an intervention is called a pit maneuver, where we pit the vehicle and cause it to spin out and then try to apprehend those people in that vehicle. We did it then and there because that seemed to be the best location to do it. It was a low uh, speed that they were driving, and it seemed like the best place to perform the pit maneuver. Off, off, actually, uh, Officer Brown uh, was the one that did the pit maneuver, and his car actually caused the van to do 180 degrees and face the opposite direction, facing down on the on-ramp. Then either the, the person driving that van or uh, there was another police car that came in contact with that vehicle attempting to stop it from exiting. That car was then hit and went into reverse. Trooper Brown had his car door open and was attempting to get out when that van hit his car door and peeled it back. And Officer Brown was temporarily uh, in that vehicle unable to get out. He did finally get out and those two vehicles were side by side, driver's door to driver's door, and when Trooper Brown got out, he immediately saw the uh, suspect with a weapon. Officer Brown called out to other units, gun, gun, he's got a gun. At that point, Officer Brown uh, shot several times into the driver's portion of that vehicle. The driver of that, of that vehicle, Mr. Pounds, had a bulletproof vest on. There were a number of shots fired by Trooper Brown. Some were not penetrating because of the vest. Others did penetrate either above or to the side of, of the vest. Uh, Mr. Pounds uh, died there on the scene. I wanna give you another human element of, of how these things happen and how quickly they happen and the way in which these troopers respond. 
After seeing Mr. Pounds was, was uh, down and, and taken out of the equation, they then went to check on the victim who was in the passenger seat. And Officer Brown then attempted first aid to try to save her life. She had been shot through the left arm, exited the underarm, then penetrated the left side of her chest. And that bullet was located in an autopsy the next morning in the right side of her torso. Officer Brown took a tourniquet from his duty belt and attempted to stop the bleeding from her arm. She was bleeding, uh, bleeding profusely. So even though he'd been involved in a, in a severe incident, a shooting, he attempted to save her life. She was then taken to the University Hospital where they attempted to save her, but she was pronounced dead at the University of Louisville Hospital. The suspect, Mr. Pounds, did in fact have a weapon on him, and that weapon has been recovered. As I said before, Officer Brown, our Trooper Brown, fired several shots, and we know at least one and possibly two shots were fired from the weapon that Mr. Pounds had on, in his possession. It wasn't until late last night that we were able to confirm with our forensic lab that the bullet fired in to Ms. Williams was fired from the weapon being carried by Mr. Pounds. That weapon has been positively identified as the weapon that shot her in the arm, penetrating her side. It took a, a pretty good while for us to get all that. that. That gun, after he fired the shot or shots, it then jammed. So what we have to do in that scenario is we have to take that weapon and make it safe which takes a little while. We have to dismantle some of the parts, and then we can examine that gun. We have to fire another projectile through that gun to match that with the bullet that was taken out of her body. And it wasn't until late last night that we were able to determine that that weapon did, in fact, shoot and kill Ms. Williams. Like I said before, the suspect in this case was wearing a Kevlar bulletproof vest. Another thing I want to point out is when the troopers and officers from the sheriff's office and the police department got behind this vehicle, they don't have the luxury to look up the suspect on Facebook. They don't have the luxury of finding out everything they possibly can. All they know is they have a suspect and they have a female that's possibly been abducted and needs help from the police. We now know that she was abducted in Ohio. At that time, we didn't know that. We also know that he has done some posting on Facebook where it was pretty obvious when he was talking to their son that he was going to take her life and then take his own life. But these troopers and officers didn't know that. They responded in the way in which they're trained. And I'm proud of the way they, they handled themselves. I'd like to talk just a little bit about the, the victim, Ms. Williams. We're all saddened that she's no longer with us, that these troopers did everything in their power to save her life. And I also want to talk about Mr. Pounds for just a second. And Trooper Dykes, to my right, was actually the one that contacted his mother to tell her of what had happened. And her response to, to Trooper Dykes was, she was apologetic. And she said, bless you for what you're doing. I'm sorry you were put in this situation. My son wanted to become a state trooper in Ohio. We did everything we could to try to make this thing right. And we're saddened that we lost two people that day. But again, I'm extremely proud of the way in which the Kentucky State Police handled this situation. So with that being uh, the additional information I wanted to have, uh, hand out today or pass out, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Did any other troopers besides Trooper Brown fire their weapons? They did not. He was the only one. And, and that's, that's another thing, Travis. When, when he finally got out of his car, he was probably only three feet from the suspect, saw the gun, and then immediately started firing in the direction of that person. We were, we were fairly confident at that time that his, his round did not penetrate her because his, his shot pattern was very close. But if you think about it, he's shooting into a bulletproof vest and this guy's not going down, and he continued to fire. But we wanted to make sure with ballistic uh, analysis that weapon that he had was the one 
that uh, took her life. In one of the original releases, I think we received yesterday, it had said he had heard a gu the trooper had heard a gunshot yep. and then received the threat. Is that inaccurate now? You know what? I don't know. And again, that goes back to we try to release information timely, but we want to make sure of its accuracy. Uh, I had heard that. We had heard that from someone at the scene, but we're unable to confirm that this, this afternoon. Uh, so I don't know if she was shot on that entrance ramp or she was shot before. We just really don't know. All I know is that when the trooper who almost was hit got out, he saw the suspect with the weapon and he proceeded to fire. Can you talk about the license plate of the van? I think we had seen originally it had an Ohio plate, and then it had a Quebec plate. Yeah, it was in fact a Quebec plate. And my understanding is that um, uh, the suspect had uh, a rental vehicle. He had taken it back to Enterprise in Ohio, and I think he stole the second vehicle, the van with Quebec plates. But again, we didn't know anything about the incident in Ohio. But when we got the call from the Valero, they told us the description of the van and the license plate of the van. But it was a Canadian plate rental car on the vehicle. So that stopping at Valero was a really big component, correct? Yes. That's the first first we heard of any of this. Uh, and, and the fact that those witnesses called the police uh, made a big difference. Do you have any idea where they were going? going? Say again? Do you know where they were going? No, ma'am. We don't know. Going back to the incident, did any of the witnesses try to intervene at all or confront Mr. Pound when they saw them at that? Guessing? They did not, but we've actually talked to one witness that is second guessing himself. Should I have done more? But when you're confronted with someone with a weapon, what we tell people to do is call the police. So I think they responded appropriately, um, and, and I really appreciate them calling us to notify us. Was Trooper Brown physically injured, and how is he doing after something like this? You know, he was not physically uh, injured, but as you can imagine, this, this takes an emotional toll when you're involved in something like this. And, and what really surprises me is that he had the wherewithal to think, I've got to save this lady's life. He pulls a tourniquet, as, as this trooper describes, and they attempted to save her life after being in a, in a, in a pretty significant shooting. Um, Again, we wanted to find out as quickly as we could whether his weapon or the suspect weapon shot Miss Williams because we wanted him to have some peace knowing that he did not fire that round. And I'm sure that he's relieved knowing that, but he's still been involved in a, in a, a, a terrible scenario and it's, it's an emotional strain. It'll, t it'll take a while for him to get over that. But, but again, I want to emphasize everything I've heard about Trooper uh, Brown is that he, he's just a model trooper and is an aggressive trooper, but one that does everything by the book, does it professionally, and he was aggressively trying to solve that crime. The fact that Tyrell Pounds had on a bulletproof vest, I mean, most people don't just walk around in a bulletproof vest, so does that say to you he... He thought something was going to happen. I mean, he thought he was going to be in a situation where he needed a bulletproof vest. Uh, I, I would only assume that he did. Um, you know, he, he knew when he left that he was going to uh, kill her and I think then kill himself or be killed by the police. And that's why the Facebook post to his son talked about, I'm not going to be around, she's not going to be around. Um, it's kind of ironic that uh, he wanted to be a trooper. Uh, you know, what caused him to snap, we'll probably never know, uh, but it's unfortunate for everybody involved. But uh, he was actually taking classes in Ohio to become a law enforcement officer. From the autopsy, uh, were you able to see, is Skyler Williams, was she pregnant at all? Uh, I don't know that answer. It's one we didn't, I didn't ask, but yeah. Well, again, thank you for being here with us, and, and we're trying to get the information out to you as quickly as we can, but as accurately as possible. Thank you.